Now we could also have uh, an entire section of variables that can drop down in the same way as something like a list or an array. Okay, so to do this, uh, let's do it in the same uh, script. We can create a number of classes within this main class. Okay, so our main class is called example. It's the same name as the script name, but we can actually define a new set of classes. Uh, now, whenever I do this, I like to do this near to the top or the bottom, so it keeps it out of the way of the rest of the script. So um, I'll leave a comment. Uh, I'll call this um, inspector visible classes. Okay, so um, here we can uh, effectively just make these public class and then give it uh, a name. Uh, let's let's call it uh, attack type or attacks. Let's call it. Okay, anything that belongs in this class can be called from the main example class. So notice that this one is actually separated out from this one until we actually call it. It's like a, a script within a script almost. Um, so what we can do here is maybe have a number of variables. Let's uh, have a public of type integer called uh, attack rate. Let's default that at around five. Okay, then maybe we want a range. So let's do range, uh, and I want between uh, one and 10. And this is going to be a public integer and call it attack damage. Uh, and I might even default that at around two. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just leave it at those two to begin with. At the moment, that will not show up at all in the inspector. All right. We've put it in the script, but it will not be visible on there anywhere. So we need to actually call it from the script. Uh, so we're going to basically call it by defining a new attacks. So we can say public of type attacks. It will call uh, something like attack types or maybe attack data, I might call it. Now, at the moment, it still won't show up. So, if we go back to our inspector, we still can't see anything. That's because the actual class needs uh, something above it, uh, another attribute that says system dot serializable for it to actually show up in the inspector. So if I now save this, now we've got our attack data at the bottom and I can open this and we've got a whole series of um, variables that are inside of there. So it allows us to actually open that up, close it down, etc. Okay, and from there, obviously I can change my attack rate can change my attack damage. I could put all the variables that I currently have inside of here. Anything that I've done here, I can also do inside of this class. So for example, if I wanted a header in the class, not a problem. So header, um, let's call it uh, attack limits, let's say, for example. Check it out again. So now it's giving me uh, headers. I can put in spaces, I can put in these separators, these text areas, I can put in, as, as you see there, I've got my slider. Okay, I can put in arrays inside of uh, something like this. So let's just put in a public of type float as an array and call it, let's say, um, attack IDs. And then we'll have a sort of a subsection inside of that section that now can expand out. We can have like maybe 10 of these. 
okay so it breaks up that formality of just having lots and lots of the same type of variables inside of your inspector you can actually separate those out into sub menus and sub parts and effectively define the type uh, of variable how you want to restrict it uh, to make it look more interesting and help others who are actually using your scripts